so very good morning everyone in this video i am going to discuss about uh, toxicity studies as per ndct 2019 of india that is a new drugs and clinical trial rules 2019 i think webcam is not working okay anyways so uh, what uh, studies we have to do particularly uh, related to toxicity studies as per new drugs and clinical trial rules as earlier we have discussed about uh, whatever the pre clinical studies we have to do uh, we should do as per the glp guidelines means we have to follow the wood laboratory practice and this new drugs clinical trial rules 2019 is applicable from the date of release 25th march 2019 except uh, one uh, part related to ethics committee which is uh, released in uh, september uh, 2019 So this new rule supersedes existing Part 10A and Schedule B of Drug and Cosmetic Rule 1945. And uh, as per new drugs and clinical trial rules, what toxicity studies you have to do? So first is you have to do systemic toxicity studies. Uh, in Schedule B also uh, you have to do these studies. Uh, so in systemic toxicity studies you have to do single dose toxicity study, dose ranging uh, studies, repeated dose systemic toxicities. 14 to 28 days, uh, 90 days, and 180 days. In single dose toxicities, uh, uh, the uh, as it's named, you have to give single dose. The question will be uh, maybe arise in your mind uh, which animals you have to be use. So in single dose toxicity, you have to be use two rodent species, mice uh, and rat. And uh, uh, next question might be through which route you have to be give dose to the animals. so you have to be keep root as same as intended for the humans uh, uh, for an example so you are going to give that particular new chemical entities in human through a oral root so you have to use in a single dose toxicity oral root of administration of that new chemical entities uh, the maximum dose through a single dose uh, single dose uh, toxicity studies you have to do 2 grams per kg of uh, uh, animal weight Uh, 2 gram means 2000 mg per kg of body weight of animals, or 10 times the normal dose that is intended in humans if it's available. So you have to be do the 10 times to the normal dose, uh, and whichever is the higher, uh, 2000 mg per kg or 10 times the human dose, you have to be use. Whichever is higher, that's important. So uh, this is applicable for the oral dosing, and uh, after dosing, uh, this dosing you have to do uh, through continuous infusion, or you can give several doses within 24 hours. And after that, you have to observe the animals for the uh, uh, for the observations, uh, for the symptom and sign for macro. And uh, after 14 days, you have to do macroscopic or microscopic examination. So means uh, after 14 days of uh, administrations, and finally you have to be calculate. MLD that is a minimum lethal dose and maximum tolerated dose, and uh, you have to be absorbed the animal for mortality also means death also. Uh, if uh, you are using a IV route, uh, then uh, you have, uh, for seven days you have to absorb the animals for death, and in case of other routes you have to absorb the animal for fourteen uh, days. And uh, <clears throat> if suppose uh, as I told in so the single dose toxicities, uh, the, you have to be use the rodent species. But suppose uh, from the literature or uh, from uh, some data, you uh, knows this particular new chemical in this uh, related to this particular new chemical entity. This rodent are a poor predictor of the toxicity. So in that case, you have to use uh, non-rodent animals also in single dose toxicity. Uh, but in most of cases, we have to use single dose uh, rodent, uh, single dose in rodent species. so i i hope you get an idea what single dose toxicity studies and then there is a dose ranging studies as its name indicate you have to be take at least three doses and doses is your uh, minimum dose uh, medium dose and highest dose and highest dose uh, which you will uh, selected uh, from the mtd of the single dose right so, so whatever the maximum tolerated dose you will calculate it from the single dose experiments that you will use as a highest dose in dose ranging studies and uh, uh, you can also keep as a control group that is we call vehicle control group and the, so there will be a total four groups one is vehicle control group uh, one is uh, lowest dose then middle dose and then the highest dose so minimum five animals per each uh, sex uh, you have to be take and daily exposure you have to give for at least 10 days 
so this is uh, and after that one you have to be do the autopsy or all the uh, clinical observations uh, of the animals uh, there is a repeated dose systemic toxicity studies in repeated dose systemic uh, uh, dose systemic toxicity studies whether it is for 14 to 28 days 90 days or 180 days you have to be use rodent as well as non rodent animals also and uh, again groups are same control group lowest dose highest dose and medium dose and highest dose should produce your observational toxicities in animals and uh, you, after that you have to be observed the animals for behavioral changes physiological or biochemical parameters you have to measure its uh, you know, water intake food uh, feed intake so all these you have to be observed and in case of parenteral if you are uh, using uh, the route of administration through uh, injection so site of injections you have to be uh, uh, do the microscopic examinations of site of injection and uh, <clears throat> Uh, so this is about the repeated dose toxicity. So another difference between these repeated dose uh, toxicity studies is uh, for 14 to 28 days uh, you have to be take uh, as I told you uh, for all these toxicity studies you have to take rodent as well as non rodent. So 6 to 10 animals per sex group and uh, in, in case of non rodent you have to be take uh, 2 to 3 animals per sex group and in 90 days and 128 days the rodents will be 15 to 30 per sex group and non rodent uh, uh, should be 4 to 6 animals per sex group so this is a, a little bit differences uh, between uh, these 14 to 28 days and 90 and 180 days uh, regarding uh, number of animals so after that you have to be absorb animals for body weight food intake and uh, all these and you can keep also a high dose reversal group and its control and uh, you can sacrifice the half animals after the 14 days and half animals after the 28 days and do all these observational and biochemical physiological parameters so this is uh, just a brief idea about uh, systemic toxicity study as per the NDCT, new drugs clinical trial rules uh, another one is your male fertility studies in male fertility studies you have to be uh, do in a rodent species and uh, uh, you have to be select six adult males per group and uh, you have to be give the exposure of that chemicals or new chemical entities for 28 days minimum 28 days or maximum 70 days and before pairing with the females and uh, uh, after pairing uh, you have to be pair these male with the female in ratio 1 is to 2 for mating and during the mating you have to continue the treatment of that particular molecules till the detection of vaginal plug or 10 days whichever is earlier right so uh, after that you have to be in females you have to be uh, calculate the fertility index after the day 30 of gestation or uh, in male after sacrifice uh, sacrifices you have to be do the uh, uh, measurement of testes epidermis all these microscopic and microscopic examinations so this is about the male fertility study and these studies are required uh, to if you would like to conduct a phase one clinical trial as you know phase one clinical trial we uh, do in a healthy male human blood tears and another one is your female reproductions and developmental toxicity studies these are uh, divided into segment one segment two and segment three uh, female fertility uh, studies uh, again uh, if your molecules is you are going to propose to be used in a woman so these studies are required if your molecule you are developing for uh, male only so there is no need to do these female reproduction and developmental toxicity study so in segment one uh, studies this is a female fertility studies you have to do in a rodent species uh, you have to take male and females uh, and then you have to do give the drug administration uh, for 28 days uh, in case of male and uh, for 14 days in case of female before mating and uh, at least 15 uh, male and 15 females per group you have to take to conduct these studies and after that you have to do body weight mating behavior progression of gestation all these parameters you have to do uh, section segment two uh, you have to be do in a one rodent and one non rodent species so normally we are taking uh, uh, rat as a rodent species and uh, uh, rapid as a non rodent to do the teratogenicity study so at least you have to take uh, 20 pregnant rats per group and then half of animals you have to be uh, sacrificed for the skeletal abnormalities and half for the visceral ab uh, abnormality segment three is the perinatals uh, if you you would like to develop your molecule for uh, your uh, pregnant or child wearing uh, wearing mothers so in that case you have to take the uh, rodent species 15 them 
and uh, last violation of pregnancy you have to give this molecule and after that you have to do all the uh, required parameters so i am not going in much more detail but you should know uh, what studies you have to do local toxicity studies we are particularly doing if your uh, route of administration is not oral we are saying you have to be apply this formulation dermally or through uh, or any other route so in that case you have to be do dermal toxicity and as per ndct uh, whatever the dermal applications you are applying uh, to the animal skin it should not less than 10% of body surface area and phototoxicity or dermal toxicity if your molecule have a potential to cause a phototoxicity or your molecule have not a potential to cause phototoxicity but uh, after the metabolism uh, your uh, uh, molecule that metabolic product has a potential to cause phototoxicity uh, phototoxic so in that case you have to be Phototoxicity studies that is conducted by a Armstrong or Arbor test. Particularly in phototoxicity studies, uh, we are using the Vena Pigs. Uh, so uh, in phototoxicity, we have to use the UV exposure. In guideline ntct it has been written. You have to do, uh, give the exposure of UV that is a 10 joule per centimeter square, and then you have to do all the uh, parameter studies. The vaginal, if your product is for vaginal, then you have to be for vaginal or rectal tolerance test. Most preferred species as per NDCT is rabbit or dog, right? Uh, ocular toxicity parenteral when you, you have to examine the site of administrations for any changes, uh, whatever uh, uh, you have injected. Ocular you have to give if your product is for ocular and you can do well known uh, is your slit lamp examinations for detect the changes in the cornea or your iris. Inhalational toxicities, you, for inhalational toxicity, you have to use one uh, rodent and one non-rodent species uh, for inhalational toxicity studies as per NDCT. Uh, so these hypersensitivities in going up maximization test you have to do, local lymph node assay uh, test you have to do. Uh, so in local lymph node assay test, you have to use only male or female. And, uh, no chemical entity you have to be uh, give the treatment through the ear skin and six animals per group and then you have to be as with the lymph node and then uh, you have to be uh, inject this brdu brdu is a bromo deoxyuridine this is a dive you have to be inject uh, <clears throat> before the uh, five uh, five hours uh, I, I didn't remember exactly but it's a five hours uh, uh, before the sacrification of the animals and then you can now uh, check how much this dye is incorporated. So these are these uh, different tests you have to be doing. Uh, what you have, uh, these genotoxicity studies, uh, these genotoxicity studies are uh, particularly uh, in vitro and in vivo. In vivo is uh, uh, your, uh, this one, chromosomal abbreviation assay we are doing. Uh, in vitro is a well-known genotoxicity studies AIMS test where we have we are using Salmonella type V uh, microorganism to check the, the genotoxic potentials of new chemical entity. So, uh, uh, particularly in vitro genotoxicity data is required when uh, you would like to conduct a phase 1 clinical trial as per NDCT. Uh, for uh, phase 2 clinical trial, you should have at that time in vivo genotoxicity data. In vivo is not uh, required, means not mandatory. If you have done, it's good, but not done, then you have to wait to start a phase 2 clinical trial, you have to provide. So, carcinogenicity is if you are using your product for more than six months then you have to be provide the density uh, data of your molecule so uh, for these toxicity studies as per the phase uh, requirements uh, if i uh, if i tell you briefly for to start a phase one clinical trial if you ask me which toxicity data is required to start a phase one clinical trial i will say uh, toxicity data is required uh, apart from that, male uh, In toxicity and female, if you are going to recruit a female uh, in phase one, normally we are recruiting only the healthy male volunteer. So female reproduction or developmental toxicity data is not required. Uh, local toxicity, if your route of administration is not required. Uh, so, uh, uh, you get an idea uh, what type of studies is required. Thank you very much.